Stefan and Jonas, thank you for coming in and talking to us today. Your co-link conveners for the Environmental and Sustainability Educational Research Network. Perhaps we could start with you, Jonas. What are the main ideas that bring people to your network? Sustainability and uh, environmental issues are really something that's on everybody's lips these days. And um, from a research perspective, it's really something that is uh, that is both uh, booming, but also something that's uh, that's highly uh, uh, complicated and, and hard to grasp. So, so we come together in our network in order to, to share ideas and research, but also to develop new research agendas and uh, hopefully move the whole field forward. So Stefan, what's the topics that you're discussing in your network? Well, I mean, the name says it all, so it's uh, environmental issues and sustainability issues, but uh, these cover quite a wide range of topics, like for example also climate change, but then we also address particular issues related to that, so like political issues, controversial issues, policy around it and so on. Okay, so, so Jonas, how, how does this network then fit in? How do you contribute to European educational research? I mean, um, we have both uh, specific traditions in, in Europe, and now being here in Germany, we also draw on the continental perspectives on the Bildung and, and so on. So, so we, we, we stand on uh, European traditions as well as, of course, uh, international and global traditions. What does your network value, I suppose, in terms of educational research and the benefits to society from that educational research? The thing is that the sustainability uh, in its essence is uh, transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary and uh, that means that, that none of us can really uh, pin down the field so we, we need each other and uh, we also need uh, those very different perspectives uh, surrounding these issues so, so we uh, very much value uh, uh, trans and interdisciplinarity but of course also uh, uh, research rigor in that these are challenges that, that move all the time so, so uh, we also value highly dynamic uh, and vibrant research, of course. Uh, and then how does that contribute to ERA, I suppose, and its mission? Yeah, I mean, uh, bringing uh, high quality research to education, I mean, uh, that for us is uh, our, our primary tool in dealing with these uh, challenges, uh, sustainability and education. So we, we see us uh, very much aligned with the, with the overall mission of uh, ERA. Well, Stefan, then. There's 33 networks, and I guess a lot of them will say, yes, we need sustainability. But what makes your network unique? I think because we're working on the intersection between all these kind of networks on the covering a topic, people come with their own approaches and, uh, to it. And I think that makes also that there are new ideas emerging. It's a new network, but over the years we have gained a lot of traction. Now we have a new record of 100 submissions and being one of the biggest networks. Uh, uh, so I think that shows that people find it interesting to meet other people and to connect to the issue of sustainability as well. So, have a think that, Jonas. Your new network that you've been going some time. Mm -hmm. Is this something you're particularly proud of that you've done? Oh, yes. Uh, of course, um, a thing that is uh, clearly important for us is that, that we cannot function as individual researchers. We need to be part of a field. And, I'm, and I think our network has, during the last five years, been, been part of, uh, of, of, of showcasing and, and bringing together a, a field of uh, otherwise people that would just sit isolated. So that's one thing. But I'm also I'm very proud of this year that we had several um, uh, link sessions with other networks that, that uh, work really well. So that, that we are not only uh, growing internally, but also growing externally. And I think that that's, that shows that, that, uh, that we actually offer something. Well, I suppose just picking up on that, you're linked to several other networks inside ERA. Do you have links to organizations outside ERA as well? I mean, we have a lot of sister networks and other uh, research associations. We had 
the, the ESE uh, chair for MESIC from the Comparative and International uh, Education Society here this year presenting our work. We have connections to AIRA, uh, SIGS as well, uh, to the national associations. So we, we're trying to, to, <laughs> to, to connect on them uh, to strengths and also influx and outflux of what's going on in our network. What is it you're looking for in a proposal for your network? I mean, to some extent, it has to be of high quality, and I think um, this year we saw that uh, even our rejection rate was not that high compared to earlier, so, but the quality of the proposals was very high, and uh, I was very impressed by that. But also that we value a new way of thinking, because that's what needed to approach the environmental sustainability issues. We cannot continue with a particular ways of being in the world, so we need to rethink how uh, to do, for example, also education research. And I think a question for both of you. What do you like about ECR? Unless you can go over this. For me, it's a, it's a highlight of the year in that uh, I, I come to meet uh, my closest uh, colleagues, uh, but often my closest colleagues are not those that I, uh, I spend most time with. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this is extremely important for me to, to touch ground both uh, in regard to, to research, but also the development of uh, research uh, agendas. So, uh, so I really like uh, I like the, the both the, the research development side of it, and then also the, the social side of it, which is extremely important in the, in, the, in developing your own research agendas when you're back home uh, on your university. And Stefan, what do you value? I think it's also the European dimension to it. So it's a little bit like coming home to a family, uh, family reunion where you have a common ground to speak about things and sometimes if you go to abroad the pond and so on, the things are different. But here we come home and we have already starting point to start uh, talking about our research uh, without having to create new ground always. Uh, uh, and then Jonas, what does, uh, what does ECR mean for your network? It's very hard to imagine the network without uh, the ESA conference. Uh, it's it's both a highlight, but it's also a way of strengthening our research. And there's uh, so many spin-off uh, projects and applications and research ag agendas from meeting uh, up here and, and doing the work here. So the things we're trying is also extending ESA throughout the year. How can we establish more contact throughout the year and not only waiting for, for Christmas in September? That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us today? We have discussed uh, that we were very impressed with the organization of uh, ESA, uh, and we normally are, but this year it was very nice. Uh, we were impressed by how uh, ESA has been running, and we're looking forward to more. Thank you both for talking to us today.